We are live here, I believe, are we? Okay, Mary Gets, we're live. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Birth East Council this 21st day of December. I'd like to call the meeting to order. If everyone could please bow their heads for a moment of reflection. Thank you. I need a motion to confirm the agenda. Moved by Jerry. Second by Carol. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, if you have pecuniary interest, you can disclose it now or as the meeting goes along. Under our consent agenda, we have 15 items. Is there anything anyone has questions on or would like pulled at this time? No? Okay. So a motion to accept all 15 items for information. Moved by Andrew, second by Amanda. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we do have a delegation with us tonight. We have uh, Steve Languas from the principal planner from Monteith Brown Planning Consultants, Ron Kudus, I'm sorry if I pronounce your names wrong, Jocelyn Morris, Steve Bryan, landscape artist, Rodney, or Ron Kudis, landscape Arch architect, Township of Perth East Park Renewal and Redevelopment Strategy. Sorry about that if I mispronounce your name. Uh, and Steve, I guess the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor Eger. It's uh, not a problem. Not the first time uh, folks have been challenged with uh, with my name uh, or Ron's for that matter. Um, it won't stop us tonight, though. So thank you for uh, for the audience and and, um, uh, and and thank you, members of, of council as well. I'm going to share my screen because we'll, we'll jump right into our presentation on the uh, the townships park renewal and, and redevelopment strategy. So everyone should be seeing that. Um, I'll do more formal introductions uh, here as we, as we get into it. We'll probably be about, we'll, we'll try to run through this quickly. Uh, we have a number of park sites that we want to talk about though. So um, in, in the interest of time, we'll, we, we, we do need to spend a few moments on each of them. Um, as indicated, uh, so Ron Cowdice, we, we completed this work uh, alongside our, our firm on Teeth Brown Planning and uh, Ron Cowdice, uh, landscape architects, and, and both Ron and, and Jocelyn Morris are in attendance tonight, will be assisting with the presentation. So a little bit about the study. Uh, this was initiated back in, in August, uh, and it was funded by the province of Ontario through, uh, through a, a provincial grant. Uh, the purpose of the study was to direct the planning, management, and redevelopment of major parks within the township. Uh, this might include the rearrangement or renewal of, of, park, at, of park amenities, or the introduction of, uh, of new amenities. It's, it's, I know it's been a topic of conversation around the, the council table in, in recent times. So we talked about funding. Um, and you, you'll also see some dollars for potential implementation of this study. Uh, a few things to keep in mind there. Uh, this, is, this is at least a, a, a 10 year guide for the municipality. It's not all going to be implemented at once. Um, it will be, you're gonna likely, uh, as is the case, uh, tend to refer these studies to your budget process and uh, the recommendations within these, these studies get prioritized through that work uh, on balance with all of the other um, expenditures and, and resources that, that the township needs to uh, prioritize in any given year. But it does provide a bit of a playbook. It gets everyone on the same page around what the potential opportunities might be for each of these parks within the township. Uh, we'll, we'll spend a few moments on each of these, but we, we really have looked at, at some of the more major uh, large parks that have an opportunity to either accommodate new amenities or, or have substantial renewal uh, in most of your communities. So from, from Shakespeare up to Millbank, Newton, and into Milverton. Now, part of the reason for, for doing this, we've definitely seen an uptick in usage of parks since the pandemic began, uh, recognition that certain activities are 
um, enjoyed and, and safer, uh, more safely enjoyed in the outdoor world. Um, as we talk about uh, mixed weather, I know that can be a challenge. We're either looking for warm weather or, or cold weather, uh, but parks are being more used more year round and, and by uh, people of all ages and abilities. So that was something that we looked at in terms of emerging activities and interests, public and stakeholder input. I'll touch on that in a moment. We have some asset management data that works its way into the study. We look at where you're growing as a community uh, so that the services can be uh, in, in locations where they're needed the most. Accessibility, barrier-free design, and, and, and equity of, in terms of distribution of, of investment is also a consideration. I mentioned public engagement, and I know several members of council attended uh, a session here or there, so uh, you might hear a little bit of, uh, of the same presentation, but uh, you would have also benefited from the opinions and perspectives of, of your residents. The community survey that we launched for the study had nearly 300 responses. Uh, you know, those are from, from households throughout your community, so closer to uh, representing a, closer to 1,000 residents. We hosted three public workshops. Uh, virtual uh, as they were with 30 people attending those. There was a public input session late last month to review the draft plan. And, and as well, we had an opportunity for written submission. So the study does uh, represent the voice of your community. Uh, we're we're um, certainly confident in saying that. A few system-wide recommendations. So it's nice to ground this in, in a little bit of, of higher level thinking as well. Uh, we were fortunate to work with the township on their uh, 2017 uh, recreation and, and uh, parks master plan at that time. That was a system-wide plan and, uh, and, and something that became apparent through that process as well as through this one is, is that there continues to be what we see as a growing deficiency of parkland in the Milverton community. This is active parkland uh, that's suitable for sports fields and amenities like splash pads and, and things of that nature. Um, and so it's a, just a, we'll use this as an opportunity to remind you that there are tools that are available to you through the, the development process and, and other means to help address that. But as a growing community, uh, we did find that to, to continue to be the case. So uh, that would be something that, that we would recommend that you keep on your radar and, and look for opportunities to address that into the future. The study looked at three particular amenities that were uh, being uh, uh, we had, there were several resident co committees, ad hoc committees, I believe that were struck over the, the last number of months to, as an initiative to bring some of these amenities into your park system. So those three were splash pads, uh, all wheels parks or skateboard parks and off leash dog parks. So specifically we looked at these and uh, th there's lots of detail and support within the plan uh, around these recommendations. Uh, but there, what we heard from your community is that the, the, there is interest, significant interest in, in a splash pad. Um, that stood out as, as being a priority, uh, with Perk Park being the preferred location for that. Uh, and, and a lot of these amenities, uh, partly given the, the, the cost, but given your history in terms of working with others, would be supported by local fundraising and an expectation of such. Uh, looking longer term, uh, a smaller slap, splash pad might be also considered in the, in the Shakespeare area. And you'll see some of these illustrated on the concept plans in a moment. In terms of a skateboard all wheels park, uh, this was uh, noted as, as, as a bit of a lower priority, but, but one that, and I think that's partly because it, it tends to uh, be very focused on, on more of a youth um, age uh, demographic. And, and sometimes there's negative perceptions of, of these, but that's not um, borne out in reality. Uh, there are very much strong parts of, of most um, municipal park systems. Uh, so looking at, at the potential for an all wheels park at Perk uh, as well in, in Milverton as a, as a medium term priority. And then off leash dog park, this was a, at the lower end of, of, uh, of community support. Uh, we don't see it as a high priority at this time. If you were to develop one within your municipal, municipal park system, uh, we, th we think we've um, We've identified a suitable site for that, which would be at Lyle Yost Memorial Park. And, and that would not require the removal of, of any ball diamonds or anything of that nature that could be accommodated on site. So you'll see that in a moment, and this might be a good time for me to, uh, to pass it over. I think Ron, you were going to uh, lead the, the group through the rest of um, the presentation and just uh, let me know I can advance the slides as required. 
Thanks, Steve. Uh, we're going to start with our exploration at uh, Greenwood Park. And uh, at Greenwood, we identified uh, high, medium, and low priorities. And in the high priority category, we looked at uh, a new playground, a renewal of the playground that's there, and as well, a renewal of the picnic shelter, uh, but this time including accessible washrooms with security lighting. Uh, in the medium priority, uh, a walking looping path uh, and the delineation of the park school property uh, using natural materials. So rather than a fence, uh, you know, giving some cues using landscape elements to define the separation between the park and the adjacent school grounds. And on the lower priority, multi-use courts, uh, a tennis court, uh, which uh, has the ability to be converted to, to pickleball courts. And uh, we're finding pickleball is, is gaining a lot of popularity uh, uh, over, uh, I think, as people are coming back from the States uh, where they're experiencing pickleball leagues and such and, and bringing the desire to play it here as well. So the recommendation is to initiate the high and medium priority improvements in the short term. That was the playground pavilion and walking paths as the funding allows and then monitor demand for the multi-use courts at the site and consider this project as part of a future phase. The next slide illustrates where these features might be placed. If you're familiar with Greenwood, uh, at the bottom of the screen is Cobalt uh, Street, and then to your right is the cemetery. And uh, the dark gray represents the, the existing, pretty much the existing uh, gravel roadway that, uh, that winds through the park. Um, you can see the light gray thinner line, that's the new walking path, either in wood chip or uh, stone dust. We're recommending uh, that it not be a formal paved path. Uh, the new picnic shelter in yellow, as well as the accessible washroom. Uh, the light green uh, irregular shape is where the new playground would be placed. Uh, and then joined uh, to the parking lot and the shelters with the, with the gray, which would be uh, uh, paved surfaces, uh, improving the parking lot. And then you can see where the multi-use uh, pickleball, tennis, or potentially basketball uh, facility would be placed. To the left is the um, property boundary and the school grounds uh, line beyond that. We've also dotted around some light green circles, <laughs> sorry, Steve, uh, which, uh, which represent uh, supplemental planting. It's a, it's a beautiful forested site which is really, I think, the important part of its character and its uniqueness. Uh, but a lot of the trees are fairly mature, and I, I know there has been some recent planting there, uh, but we're, we're rec recommending that that process continue uh, with, with the planting of new trees, and that's what those uh, green circles represent. Thanks, Steve. Next, looking at Lyle Yost. Uh, in the high category, security lighting for the uh, pavilion and parking lot and replacing the playground equipment that's currently there. In the medium priority, uh, uh, a walking loop uh, for walking you know, dog and going for a stroll. Uh, partial park naturalization and tree planting. Uh, this is, a, this is a, uh, a popular initiative we're seeing all across the province now uh, to reduce maintenance costs, but also to introduce habitat for pollinators and, and uh, wildlife into the parks and some improvements to the lower ball diamond. A uh, lower priority would be an off-leash dog park. So the recommendation that we'd like to make is that you initiate the high priority improvements in the short term. That included security lighting, playground replacement, and as funding allows, and in partnership with Millbank Athletic Association. Additional improvements would include the addition of an off-leash dog park, which may be considered as part of a future phase of park renewal. Here's the illustration showing where those features would be placed. Uh, the dark gray represents pretty much the current parking lot uh, surrounded with a, uh, a strolling path. Uh, we've moved the playground uh, a little bit closer to Perth line uh, and, uh, and behind it uh, accommodated where the off-leash par park would be for, for larger dogs. You can see a controlled park access for the dogs and uh, smaller dogs would, would enter the same vestibule, but they would go uh, closer to Perth line uh, to a smaller off-leash area for them. Um, improving the ball diamonds, uh, 
the naturalization areas adjacent to the natural area uh, that we see to the left, security lighting, uh, and then there's the walking path similar to what we've recommended on Greenwood. The next site is Morningdale, Morningdale Centennial Park. In the high priority category, uh, new playground with swings and seating. Uh, we heard this uh, from a number of people who presented in the public meetings. Uh, a new improved pavilion and a reconstruction of the uh, bridge uh, crossing the creek. In the medium priority, an accessible walking path throughout the park and a parking area improvement on the west side of the park. In the lower priority, a river overlook and boardwalk. There's a beautiful location on the site, sort of an elevated bank that you have a prospect up and down the creek, which is really quite attractive. And improving the driveway and parking lot paving on the east side. From this, we developed this recommendation that you initiate the high priority improvements in the short term, the playground pavilion bridge. Uh, as the funding allows, and additional improvements may be considered as part of a future uh, phase of park renewal. Uh, we have two illustrations to show you. Um, on the east side, um, you can see the um, existing structure, the existing pavilion where we're recommending improvements and, uh, and an accessible washroom being added to that. Um, behind there is your is a uh, improved uh, parking area. Uh, you can see the river outlook uh, where it's positioned and you can see what I was suggesting. You can look up and down the NIF uh, from that location in the elevated spot. Uh, following the yellow paths, you can go down and over the NIF uh, on, a, on an improved bridge. Um, you know the site now, it's sort of a concrete apron that's there uh, that needs some repairs. Uh, new improved playground and swings. Uh, we, we made a note there to avoid the weeping bed, there's a septic field adjacent to that. Uh, and then we've connected the path around and up to 70, uh, 73 line there uh, so that people can, can uh, access the park from there or go across to the west side. And we've suggested a boardwalk. There's sort of a natural wetland area there that uh, it would, would form a really interesting spot to explore. Uh, so that's one of the uh, suggestions we've made. In addition, we've uh, improved the location for the hitching post for uh, um, people who arrive here by horse and buggy. And, um, and then in, uh, putting a new backstop uh, in the open play area to accommodate uh, baseball. This is the west side. Um, you can see where the bridge reconstruction would happen, the improvement of the walking path, uh, the existing Dunbar cabin, which uh, uh, would, would remain there in the, in the short term, and then the improvement of the parking area. Again, the green dots representing uh, new trees to be planted on the site. The Newton Community Port Park and uh, Sports Fields, the next location. The highest priority was the new accessible playground. In the medium category, life cycle maintenance for the pavilion, the parking lot, the ball diamonds, where we're looking at some new fencing and the removal of some lights. And the lower priority, lighting on one of the existing soccer fields. Uh, from this, the recommendation is to replace the playground when it reaches the end of its life cycle. Additional improvements may be considered as part of a future phase of park renewal in partnership with the Newton Athletic Association. And here's an illustration showing those recommendations. Uh, so what we see is the overall park and then the illustration to the right is a blow up of the playground area to um, make it a little easier to read. And in that blow up, you can see an accessible path with new accessible playground features. And uh, on the overall site, the new soccer field lighting, um, and a uh, new baseball diamond uh, removing the existing lights, uh, like improvements to the baseball diamond. And then the existing pavilion and washrooms that you see there, this park's in pretty good condition, well used and well managed and maintained. Uh, so the, the, the primary suggestion here is uh, the adding the lights of the soccer field in and uh, improving the, um, the playground. Uh, the Perk site, uh, Perth East, 
the highest priority was the pavilion that's already planned for um, uh, this or next year. I think it's going to happen next year. And the inclusion in that same area of a splash pad. Uh, the medium priority is the skate park or uh, all wheels park at the front of the property. And we didn't have any lower priorities. Those were the main two recommendations. Uh, flowing from this, that we initiate the high and medium priority improvements in the short term, the pavilion and splash pad and the all wheels park with contributions from community fundraising. Additional improvements may be considered as part of future phases of park renewal. Here's the site, uh, of course, your, your existing arena and uh, community center. Uh, we've made some small adjustments to the layout of the parking lot uh, that you can see there in order to accommodate the all wheels park that's there. Um, we worked out the parking uh, allocation and the result of carving out that space would be the loss of just three parking spaces. Um, moving the hitching post uh, to an area that's sort of out of the way from the main flow of traffic. You can see it in the lower right hand corner. And then looking behind uh, the community center uh, where the pavilion would be placed, that's that yellow box you see there, adjacent uh, a splash pad, and then the existing pool that, that you see on the, uh, on the image. Uh, we've also shown a reconfiguration of the parking lot that's at the back of the building. And then Shakespeare, the Optimus's playground uh, in the highest, thanks Steve, uh, and the Athletic Association, Rec Center and Athletic Association. The highest priority would be to explore the development of a walking path loop here, connecting the park to the surrounding community and additional tree planting. Uh, in the medium priority, the playground expansion, there's a wonderful playground that's there now that we, we uh, had good feedback on that the, there's an interest in expanding it and updating the surfacing. And the lower priority would be the potential for a splash pad here uh, near the playground. Our recommendation was to initiate the high priority improvements in the short term, the potential walking path loop and tree planting in partnership with local community associations. Additional improvements, including the addition of a splash pad, might be considered as part of future phases of park renewal. And the illustration for that, uh, here you can see the park, not much change, some, some trees along the uh, boundary to your left, to the, to the west and along the railroad tracks. Uh, that one building that you see next to the railroad tracks is, is a, a utility building, but we understand that that has the potential to be expanded. Uh, so we've kept that in mind in looking at uh, additions to the existing playground to make it more accessible and the potential for a splash pad adjacent with a shade structure between to provide some shelter for people at the park. And then uh, looping trails that, uh, that wind uh, around the site uh, connecting to the pathway to the north and along parallel to the railroad tracks and then over uh, behind the baseball diamond. Those are the parks that we've explored. Uh, we've we've uh, provided a, a fairly detailed uh, cost estimate for what these features might, might uh, um, you know, be uh, costed out for the next little while. Uh, and some examples are uh, Splash Pad, about 330,000, an All Wheels Park, about 275, an off-leash dog park, about 110, and an accessible playground in that range of 120 to 175. Uh, but as I say, there is a more detailed uh, summation in the report for you to review. Uh, these are numbers that we've experienced uh, over the last a couple of years, although we have seen an uptick in costs associated with COVID. And uh, uh, we, we try to be realistic in those numbers to, to, to give you some yardsticks to work with. Thank you, Ron. I, I can take it over from here. Uh, I appreciate the, the detailed uh, review. I can, can almost hear the children playing in the park right now. <laughs> um, just picking up from um, for where Ron had, had left off, and I think I mentioned this off the top, a variety of funding sources would be required uh, to, to make this happen, you know, in continued efforts with uh, your service clubs and, and athletic associations. And 
uh, with, with budget sort of upon you, um, it, it is a recommendation of the plan to, to start building these, these projects into your budget. Um, ideally, you start looking at one or two parks that, that probably need the love the greatest, and, and you start making some meaningful improvements to those one or two rather than sort of, uh, you know, bringing in the excavator and, and, the, and the post diggers, um, you know, every season to, to every park. I, I think you lose your efficiencies that way. And, uh, and you can see some real meaningful improvements if, if there's a focus on, on a few uh, high priority park sites. So that would be our recommendation there. Uh, there's plenty of more detail in the report. We'd uh, love to take any of your, your, your questions or, or comments at this time. Okay, thanks, gentlemen. Any questions, Daryl? Yeah, just to clear up here, refresh me. When the the consultation meetings went on and in the sessions in the public, was it available the pricing to the public? The big thing I see here is the the, the actual costs of this. When you start explaining the costs of this, NASA set management to the community, they're like. Oh, okay. So I'm just wondering how much was available when we had the, the community involved. That probably wasn't a big aspect. Was it right available? Oh, thank you, Councillor Herlick. Uh, for the we, we had the full draft report, which included all of the costing, was posted on the municipal website in November. Uh, it was posted in advance of the, the, the final virtual uh, public information session and, and during the, 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 the public, um, the two week period for, for submission. So uh, it, it would have been available at that point in time. Uh, but, you know, it, it, as we started into the process, it was more a matter of, of, of looking at, at needs and priorities and, and then building the, the costs up uh, to, to respond to the local, you know, the, the locally appropriate level of design too, because, you know, a, a playground or a splash pad, they can be large, they can be small. So we wanted to, to price out something that would be reflective of, of local needs. Okay, no, great, thanks. And then just the second part, yes, it, we, you touched on the, the COVID-19 aspect around pricing. Um, that is a nightmare. I was talking with a plumber today and he goes, well, talk to me in three weeks. Because I can assure you the prices will be different. So depending on what components is very difficult times. Um, the trucking industry is 30 to 40% increase in private trucks. I know that and we can't get them. No, thanks. A lot to digest here, but thank you. Okay, anyone else with questions? Andrew? Thank you for the presentation. It was very easy to read. Um, so, some art, and this one was really good. Thank you. I just have a question, a couple of questions. The main one would be about um, in the past, our decision making process has included uh, competing facilities, um, and we've actually uh, uh, set adrift a couple of facilities in the past because they were competing with the other facilities uh, in the area. Was that considered in this report? Thank you. Thank you. Through you, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Councillor McAlpine. Uh, yes, in, in terms of especially for um, a splash pad and a skateboard park, uh, we're aware of, of those other uh, amenities that are that exist within your region. Depending on where you live in Perth East, they tend to be anywhere from usually 15 or closer to 20 to 25 minute drive from, from a Milverton or, or, or Shakespeare. Uh, to some of those facilities in, in, in a Wellesley or, or Listowel or, um, or, or Wilmot, what have you. Um, so, you know, we recognize that. I think more and more, those are amenities that are, are being delivered more at, at a local level. Um, and, and I don't suggest that, and that you have a splash pad in every community um, in, in the township. So, you know, we wanted to find a bit of that balance, but there's recognition if, if you're throwing three kids in, in a vehicle or, or if you're just able to go down the road, um, they, they are well-used amenities for, for at least you know six months of the year and, and it uh, is, is increasingly becoming a desired level of, uh, of service at, at the local level, but because of cost and, and the operating costs as well. And, and I think we've documented that in the report. I wanna say for a splash pad, um, I'd have to go back to it, but we usually see you know 15 or, or 20 to 25,000 a year 
uh, uh, in terms of operating costs for, for a splash pad. And, and almost all of that is, is in water costs. So it depends on your, lo your local water rates. Um, you know, and, and there's ways to recapture that, but, but that comes with front end costs in terms of technology and staff costs as well. So th there's a few ways to deal with, with, with that. Um, but, but certainly I think that's why we tried to reflect that desire locally with recognizing that there's other experiences that are serving other residents and, and other municipalities first and foremost. And kind of a, if I may follow up, uh, kind of a something that, you, that uh, your group mentioned was a distribution of investment throughout the township. I know we're looking only at our facilities, um, like uh, Perth East owned facilities. When I look on page two of the report, the well-written report, I see see a pretty pretty high concentration. Um, I'm just wondering if um, you know that may create other issues. Um, and did, did that come up at all during the consultation with the different user groups? I guess is my question. Sorry, I apologize. I missed a couple words in in, in there. What uh, a concentration of? Could you? Yeah, that? you had mentioned. Steve, um, about uh, distribution of investment. Sorry, I'm trying to read at the same time here. Got it. Distribution of investment in your presentation. Um, when we look at page two of the report, we see a fairly high concentration in one area in, in conjunction with the competing facilities um, um, theory, I guess, which we've made decisions on before. Um, was, there, was that picked up on by anybody in, the, uh, in any of the groups during the consultations? Um, I, I, you know, I, I think what I can say to that is um, each, each community and each park has its own sort of unique flavor to it. And, and you have a very strong volunteer commitment across your entire municipality. And, and, and that's uh, commendable of, of, of your residents and the service clubs and, and the groups. And we want to continue to foster that through the study. So nothing in here is, is intended to sort of, um, you know, discourage them from from continuing to invest as, as residents and fundraisers in, in their parks uh, but some of some of your parks perk for example um, uh, mornington and, and, and morningdale and greenwood don't really have an association that looks after them so um, you know in in part uh, that may mean find, you know, finding other funding sources uh, and we also do look at where your greatest population is, uh, because convenience uh, does tend to lead to, to greater use of, of, of amenities. So um, that's a primary reason why you would see a splash pad and an all-wheels park recommended in Milverton as, as your, your largest settlement area and, and your, your, your fastest growing uh, community as well. So it would be reflective of, of the population that has access to those facilities. I keep going. Um, so the, 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 I'm just curious, so the, there was a lot of walking paths, which are great. There's actually an unutilized one in uh, around the soccer field for the optimists in Shakespeare. It's not a, it's not on our land, but uh, it, it's, it's a lot. Of, I know from that group, it's a lot of work to keep that going. Was there any discussion on who would tend these? Because there's, there's a lot. It's really hard to keep the weeds out of these things and spread the mulch every year. Where would those costs be borne? Did that show up in the study or the discussions? Ron, you may want to speak to, I don't know, maintenance of, of these from, or from a design perspective. Um, in, in terms of uh, overall maintenance and operation costs, uh, that's not really factored into, uh, in, into the study to any great degree other than noting some areas where it would be more substantial as a level of service, such as, as the splash pad. From a maintenance perspective, I find the stone dust is a lot less maintenance. The weeds do and creep on the surface. But like with your, uh, your infields and your baseball diamonds, uh, they, they have a special rake that, that's pulled behind a tractor. And uh, once or twice a year is all it really requires. And then from time to time, some topping up where the bark uh, or, or mulch uh, paths, they're constantly decomposing. So it's a constant renewal. Uh, so, you know, most of the parks we're doing are, are stone dust rather than bark chips. Thank you. Okay, anyone else with questions? No? Oh, Jerry? Yeah, thanks, Mary. It's not, not a question, just a comment. 
So as um, back in 2017, I did chair the, the committee for the, the study of the park, of the um, recreation study. Um, so I was a little hesitant to, when this was brought forward that we just had the study in 17, why do we need another study? But now having seen this study, I'm, I'm very impressed. I appreciate all the, all the work that's been done. Um, again, it is a it is a 10 year plan. I, I, we, we do have um, the, the pavilion at Perk, so that's started. We're going to get going. Um, again, and I, I think I'm, I'm not speaking for all my council members, but it is 10 years. I, we're not gonna be able to do this next year, in two years, five years. It's going to be a, a, a process. Um, similar with the, with the, um, the recreation study, I want to see this, and I think we do. We want to see this come back every year. We want to see what bench where, where we've hit, which um, of the points we, we've um, you know improved on, and the same with this plan. I want to see it come back. Um, obviously, we got to approve it first, but I want to see it come back. You know, what have we done? Where are we going? So, just just a, a, a you know much appreciative of the report, and I'm, I'm glad that we got it done. Again, I was a little hesitant, but it's it's a great little roadmap for for the township for the future. So just to answer Jerry's question, uh, Wes and Becky and Teresa and I had a meeting this afternoon and the idea is we're going to incorporate this into our capital budget and their staff is going to bring back a 10 year capital forecast of the items that are in this uh, report and how we can start to, to look at them and fix them. So it is going to be looked at, Jerry. It, and I guess that'll be up to the budget committee then to see where the funds are going to come from and how we're going to move forward. So, okay, Daryl. No, I'll just finish off here. There's a couple couple components here I have concern with at the bottom end. Um, we had talked about, and it was brought to council at Tavistock. It's pretty much go. Oh, I believe it's going to be installed in the next year. Who they are putting. A splash pad in so that's about a 10 minute drive and on top of that i'm just wondering far as surfacing of the yard so the main diamond in shakespeare and the booth layer that's all gravel yard yet and it, it's no secret shakespeare has an incredible ball um following and very good ball teams and it's busy and i'm just wondering if that's something you know I know maybe this is out of the realm, but yet it is. It's it's a nice amenity to have the pavement right there for people with their ball bags, et cetera. Um, it just wasn't mentioned here, I can see. So it's just the yard in around there, you know, for to pave that section would be a nice, nice slice, I would think. And it wasn't put in here. So I'm just concerned maybe if that's something that could be caught on. I have some, you know, I mean, ultimately it's going to be put into the 10 year plan. Uh, yeah, we got to wrap our heads on a lot of things these days because things are getting pricey. Um, anyways, just comment on that about the yard. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hurley. Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'll comment on, on a couple of things. One, um, in, in terms of, of the splash pad in, uh, in, in the Shakespeare area, we did note that as a lower priority. Um, you know, part of it uh, was th there is some desire expressed by, by the local Optimist Club uh, to have uh, some additional funding. Uh, for, for an amenity like that out there. So, you know, we did listen to them and make sure that, that there was a spot reserved for that if, if there's a go forward on it. But, but we didn't find that as being a, as high a priority as some of the other site improvements. And in terms of the parking area, um, you know, Ron, maybe you can comment further. We didn't really recommend a lot of paving of, of, of parking lots. Um, you know, certainly there's a cost associated with that. Um, uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't think anything, you know, when it comes to those sorts of site improvements, um, you know, ultimately, if, if you're going in and, and uh, investing in a site and, you know, a decision is, is made at that time that, that you, you know, that's a good move. It has value to the users and the community. Certainly nothing in this plan would, would prohibit you from, from doing that. But Ron, I don't know if you had anything further on that. Yeah. In, uh parks that have a higher seasonality in terms of their use, uh, asphalt paving makes sense because you're plowing it. 
and uh, you're you know you end up with all the gravel at one end of the park. Uh, La Yost, as an example, probably wouldn't have the same uh, because it's it's largely a, a, a spring, summer, fall kind of a site. Um, there's also the issue of water infiltration and water management. And uh, as soon as we pave the surface, um, we have to think about stormwater drainage as well and storage on site. And that site, as you know, is fairly steep. Um, and and we, we didn't look at that comprehensively, but, but that would be another issue that we'd have to think about uh, as well. No, thank you. Okay, anyone else with questions? If not, uh, Steve and Ron, thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, great report. It's a, a, a great uh, thing for Perth East to look at now and as we go forward and look at our park. So uh, thank you again for coming and we wanna wish you all the best in this uh, Merry Christmas season and a Happy New Year. And I'm sure we'll speak to you again. So thanks again. A pleasure, thank you, Merry Christmas. Okay, now we'll move to uh, public meetings. We do have two public meetings and the first one is a zoning bylaw amendment for Michael Wilhelm Excavating Limited. I declare this virtual public meeting to be open. This virtual public meeting is being held to consider a proposed zoning bylaw amendment affecting property currently owned by Michael Wilhelm Excavating Limited, care of Michael Wilhelm, Legal address concession to part lot 10 Ellis Ward 4365 line 36. This virtual meeting is an opportunity for the township to advise the public of the purpose and intent of the amendment and receive their input prior to considering adoption of the implementing bylaw. If a bylaw is adopted to implement the zoning amendment, a notice of passing will be forwarded by prepaid first class mail to various agencies of interest and others who have requested notice. An appeal to the local planning Appeal Tribunal objecting to the adoption of the bylaw may be filed with the clerk not later than the date stated on the notice. Any person attending the meeting who wishes to receive written notice of a bylaw passed to implement the, the amendment is asked to give their name and mailing address to the clerk following this meeting. No written notice except as previously noted will be given unless requested by email following the meeting. Due to COVID-19, public meeting procedures have been adjusted to adhere to provincial guidelines for holding electronic meetings. Any person who wished to be heard regarding this matter was asked to register prior to this meeting by the deadline of Monday, December 20th, 2021 at 12 noon with the municipal clerk. I will now call on our county planner, Melissa Gassi, to present the planning report and recommendations. Melissa, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Let me just share my screen. Just give me one second. Um, uh, so tonight I will be presenting an application to rezone the land at 4365 line 36 in Perth East. Uh, the subject land is located at the southeast corner of Perth Line 36 and Road 125. <clears throat> the site has an ag active aggregate operation and is subject to Aggregate Resource Act license number 625419. There's an existing barn uh, on, on the site and the newly constructed uh, drive shed at the northeast end of the site. The drive shed replaced a single family dwelling on site, which was demolished <clears throat> in 2021 to make room for this drive shed. Um, the southerly portion of the site is currently used for agricultural production. Uh, there are two entrances to the site, one serving the aggregate extraction and the other serving the remaining agricultural production and associated buildings and both entrances will be preserved. Um, the applicant proposes to construct a new single family dwelling, uh, two stories in height uh, with a ground floor area of approximately 140 square meters uh, in place of the existing barn. So you see that red outline, that's where it's gonna go. Um, just outside of the agricultural portion of the lot, uh, which is on the kind of right hand side. Um, in order to accomplish this, the applicant proposes to re redesignate and rezone approximately 0.2 hectares 
to accommodate the residents. Um, today, um, so today is a statutory public meeting pertaining to this uh, rezoning um, for, uh, for the public feedback and council information. Uh, the recommendation pertaining to this uh, zoning bylaw amendment will be made to council following the, pro the approval of the official plan amendment uh, by the county. <clears throat> um, in conjunction, <clears throat> In conjunction with the proposed uh, development, uh, the applicant undertook an aggregate impact assessment done by Robert Gibson Consulting Services. Um, it's included as an attachment in my report. The report concluded, um, the aggregate impact report concluded that the new dwelling would not negatively impact or cause any additional sterilization of the primary or secondary aggregate resource nor will the new dwelling result in significant sterilization of good quality aggregate from within the licensed pit. Um, also in conjunction with this development, the applicant commissioned an archeological assessment done by ARA, uh, which asks for monitoring on, of any future ground disturbance work within the 50 meter uh, sort of buffer of the protected area. And I don't know if you can see it on the image, it's that green outline. That's the protected area, that's the 50 meter uh, buffer. Um, next slide. Um, so the amendment uh, proposes to rezone a, a small portion of the aggregate lands to accommodate this future residence from the mineral aggregate resources special zone four uh, to agricultural zone A. Um, the zoning bylaw amendment application has been brought forth in conjunction with an official plan amendment application, which seeks to similar, similarly redesignate the mineral aggregate resource um, um, license pit to agricultural designation. Um, so the proposed development will not have a negligible impact on the overall viability and extraction capabilities of the site. As the area uh, to be rezoned is already used for agriculture and uh, not a part of the extraction area and the new dwelling will be erected um, in place of the existing barn. The aggregate, uh, <clears throat> the aggregate resources assessment concluded that um, this rezoning of 0.2 hectares of the land to accommodate the reconstruction of the residence in is insignificant to the overall capacity uh, of the site in terms of extraction. And uh, this re redevelopment protects the mineral aggregate resource as much as possible and in consistency with the uh, provincial policy statement. Um, also, we will be recommending a hold to be put on the land so that any future development uh, activity is properly monitored and that archeological findings and heritage attributes are protected in consistency with the PPS uh, for the preservation of cultural heritage. Um, this concludes my presentation. Thank you, I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thanks Melissa. Uh, no one registered to make a presentation or speak in opposition of the application. No one registered to make a presentation or speak in support of the application other than the applicant or the applicant's agent. Caroline Baker, agent, registered to speak on behalf of the applicant, D14Z11-2020-PE, and Michael Wilhelm has registered to answer questions with regards to this application. Well, Caroline, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening to the mayor and members of council. Uh, firstly, thank you to staff for reviewing this application uh, and their thorough um, and helpful uh, presentation. Uh, really, and I apologize, I was here to answer uh, any questions um, that council may have or members of the public, uh, but certainly we're in agreement uh, with staff's uh, conclusions and recommendations uh, in their report. And as mentioned, Mr. Will Wilhelm is here as well this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from members of council? Daryl? No, oh, it's, it's quite interesting here as I read through, it was very good. The aggregate, what's been extracted, what it was licensed for and what's remaining. It's quite a process, it's pretty interesting. Basically what I see is two five gallon pails full and Mr. Wilhelm's asking to keep a teaspoon back or a tablespoon. <laughs> I, I like analogies. 
it's not a lot there and the heavy overboard burden. Um, yeah, it's a nice fit. It's all existing. There's buildings there. It's pretty interesting, but no, it's definitely, definitely not much what he's after. And it's heavy overburden. It's quite interesting how that works and the cost it to go off for that gravel. So, no, that's my thoughts. Thank you. Hugh, do you have a question? Uh, Caroline, um, what what would have triggered an archaeological assessment? Is this because it's uh, aggregate land? Like, like, why would you do that? Like, what what would trigger it? Uh, through the mayor to the deputy mayor, uh, excellent question. Uh, it's through the ministry's uh, permitting process uh, for aggregate extraction. So in order to obtain that permit to extract aggregate resources, one of the submission requirements amongst many other uh, technical studies is archaeological uh, to ensure clearance before uh, materials are essentially removed off of the site. Oh, okay, thank you. And could you tell me what a FAUNAL specimen is? In terms of archaeological, there yeah, is, uh, archaeological. through archaeological assessment, uh, there are a number of different criteria for type of um, historical items that you can find and can range um, from uh, broken pottery uh, to tools, uh, there, there's a wide range. I'd have to look up the specific definition, but it would be an item of interest um, as defined by the province of having some archeological significance. And when you prepare archeological assessments, there's ministry guidelines on how many articles you have to find uh, before it's considered as significant as an archeological resource. Um, so the, the recommendation is that should any digging be occurring on the site that an archaeologist should be present. Uh, okay, just uh, one quick last question, if it's possible. Um, to do all these agricultural, uh, sorry, uh, archaeological studies and things like that, is, um, can you kind of put a, a cost to that, if that's possible? Uh, through the mayor, I can certainly give some estimate ranges of what I've seen on uh, projects that I've been involved in. Uh, typically, a stage one or stage two archaeological assessment, which is what has been completed, it can range depending on the, the property size, you know, five to 20,000. Uh, when you get into a stage three, uh, which is what was what will be required for this site, uh, you're talking about significantly higher costs. I've seen from fifty thousand to one hundred thousand dollars plus uh, just to complete the stage three archaeological assessment. Oh, okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Appreciate well, that. Thank you. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, this might be a question for. Teresa, but uh, it seems like a little bit of a change in process for us. We have the third recommendation on this planning report that we direct staff to prepare a final recommendation. I'm not sure I've seen a recommendation like that in quite a while. Can you clarify why the report reads that way? Like, why are we having to request, we have to move a recommendation to hold a public meeting and to prepare the final recommendation. Can you just clarify that for me? Sure, I can. So in terms of um, with this report, it's a little bit different because the public meeting for the zoning bylaw amendments coming forward first, then there's the report also for um, the recommendation for council to recommend to the county regarding the official plan amendment. So <clears throat> the county will need to consider and approve the official plan amendment um, and we're satisfying the condition right now. It's just worded a little bit differently than, than what council are used to. So we're satisfying that condition right now in terms of holding the public meeting, but following the approval of the official plan, then a report will be coming back regarding the, the uh, zoning bylaw, the final report regarding the zoning bylaw amendment. But the requirement of a public meeting will al already be satisfied through holding this public meeting tonight. So are we able to make a recommendation for the OPA like to the county or is that just their, their, their decision entirely? Because I don't see in here that we're asking to recommend approval either in our recommendation. So 
in the, in the report coming forward, there's another report regarding the OPA and that will be the recommendation to the county to, for, for um, East to recommend to the county regarding approval for, for the OPA. A little bit confusing because of, of just um, a little bit confusing, um, maybe in terms of uh, the report coming back, but because the, we need to um, satisfy the condition for the OPA, right? We have to have the OPA in order prior to um, the ZBA being approved. If that makes yeah, if I, if I may jump in, um, Madam Mayor and uh, members of the council. So in order to expedite the process, so typically um, OPAs and ZBAs, they're frequently run concurrently. When we, but when we have this um, two-tiered system, we have to kind of almost, in order to run them concurrently, we almost have to stagger them. So that's the case here. So this is the public meeting, statutory public meeting for the zoning amendment. Then I'm going to have to present, um, I'm going to present uh, the OPA later on, but it's just for your endorsement. And then obviously, like I have to present the, the same OPA report um, at the county level. And then I will be coming back and presenting the final report, final zoning amendment report um, for, for this Michael Wilhelm excavation. So, so the same thing applies to 8.1 eight, eight and 8.1.1 8 and 8.1.2 exactly. are are just the formalization of 7.1.1 and 7.1.2. Correctly, yeah. So both are, for zoning bylaw amendments, both are statutory public meeting meetings, meaning uh, we are seeking uh, input from the public and from the council. And, and then we're going to be seeking your endorsement for the OPAs. Thank you. Okay, Jerry. Yeah, th uh, thanks for the explanation. I think, it, I think I understand. The only thing I have is in the recommendation and it's in this report and then the, the next um, application. The second paragraph of the recommendation says that a council hold a public meeting pertaining to the zoning bylaw amendment, but we are already in the public meeting, are we not? Should that just be reworded somehow or just tell yes, me? Help with that? I think we're good. <laughs> Melissa and I had that conversation today, and we're going to change the word hold to held. Okay, so we held a meeting, so that should clear it up. That is correct. Like the re resolution will actually have the correct wording. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other questions to the report, uh, Andrew? Yes, thank you for the report. I have a question about the report. A couple of questions. So, is there any comments received from the circulation? From the notice uh, through Mr. Uh, through, through Madam Mayor um, through you mean pertaining to the application from the public? Yeah, so like kind of what Councillor Smith was talking about. We've already the sign's been in the ground for this process, or yes, it, yes, th throughout the process, yes, we had the uh, the applicant has had a sign posted, and uh, we have received no comments from the public. And a second question, if I may, just to try and understand, this is a, a different one. Um, I'm going to flip my screen here to look at the report. It's talking about uh, changing this uh, 0.2 of an acres to from MR4 to agricultural zone A. Is that is that a good synopsis of what we're doing here? Yes, zoning wise, um, zoning is changing uh, from MAR-4 to A, essentially. So that's mineral aggregate resources, uh, special zone four to agricultural zone, which is just, it's gonna be just called agricultural. And that's just for the, I, I don't know if that house is still there or not. I actually used to live across the street from there, but is if that- you remember, just, Sorry, if you remember the, fir the first slide where that red outline is, that's mm -hmm. going to be rezoned, only that portion. Agriculture. Exactly, yes. It, it just, I'm just asking it, it, and I'm not questioning the report at all, it's a great report, just it kind of looks more like a severance. <laughs> Uh, no, it, yes. Uh, so through Madam Mayor and members of the council. So what we are doing, there's a, an existing, so the vast majority of the site is zoned a mineral aggregate resources dash four. And then there's like a small portion leading from the road, basically to where the buildings are clustered. That's, that's zoned agricultural. 
Um, and so we're sort of expanding that rectangle, which leads to, to the cluster of, of the farming uses. And then there's just gonna be like another rectangle added to that ex existing long rectangle. The existing is already agriculture. Correct. Perfect, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Seeing no questions, council will consider a resolution regarding the planning report recommendation following the conclusion of the virtual public meeting. Bylaw number 211-2020 to implement the approval of the zoning application will be considered at a later date. Okay, and the second public meeting we have is for Walter Sherry, Rebecca Lance, and Eric Schmidt in Northeast Hope. So this virtual public meeting is being held to consider a proposed zoning bylaw amendment affecting property currently owned by Walter Sherry and Rebecca Lance and Eric Schmidt. Concession 7, Lot 19, Northeast Hope Ward 21, First Line 43. And the preamble is exactly the same as the previous public meeting, so we're just going to move right down to Melissa. Melissa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so this is an application to rezone the lands at 2158 Perth Line in Perth East. Uh, the subject land is located on the north side of Perth Line 43 and is approximately 417 meters to the east of Perth Road 107. The middle section of the lot um, shown uh, on the slide in uh, yellow outline was formerly used for aggregate extraction. To the south of the former aggregate area is an agricultural area, and to the north end is a woodlot. Uh, there are four structures on site clustered on the northwest portion of the agricultural fields serving the agricultural operation, including a residential dwelling and a barn. The site was previously uh, subject to the Aggregate Resource uh, Act license, the portion of the site uh, that was used for the aggregate extraction has since been rehabilitated and turned back into agricultural production as certified by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry on October 1st, 2020. Um, you have this attached in the appendix of the report. Uh, this license was successfully surrendered on November 17, 2020. Um, so in order to formally uh, recognize this rehabilitation, the applicant is seeking to both rezone and redesignate the former aggregate, uh, aggregate operation um, portion of the site. Um, this slide shows um, various zones and designations pertaining to the property. Um, the various zones, which is in the second column, uh, corresponds to the OP designations, which are in the first column. And, and as you can see, we have sort of three designations and three three zones in each kind of corresponding to to the previous image um, the land itself is um 41.47 hectares um, today uh again is the uh, statutory public meeting pertaining to this zba for uh, to obtain public feedback and for council information and the recommendation pertaining to this um, zoning amendment will be made to council following the, the approval of the official plan by the county. Um, this amendment proposes to rezone the land from mineral aggregate resources zone uh, to agricultural zone and natural resources environment zone two. Uh, this rezoning application, so NRE2 is gonna be happening on the north end and you know, striping portion, the middle section is actually gonna be a revert back to agricultural uh, zone. This rezoning application um, has been brought forward in conjunction with an official plan amendment, um, which seeks to redesignate, um, you know, the same sort of um, section of the lot to, uh, to the middle uh, aggregate slash license pit uh, resource and also agricultural designation. The northern portion will be natural environment um, designation. Um, so the proposed um, zoning aims to formally confirm the land uses pertaining to the rehabilitation of the lands of the formal of the former mineral aggregate operation. Um, this new use will be consistent and compatible with the adjoining uh, agricultural use. 
uh, it will have roughly the same acreage and soil capability at it, at it, as it existed previously, uh, save and except the area to the north, which will be rezoned to suit the adjacent uh, natural heritage and to increase its protection and recognize its extent. <clears throat> the proposed rezoning will conform to the County of Perth official plan uh, once the official plan is uh, approved by the county. Um, and this concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thanks, Melissa. No one registered to make a presentation or speak in opposition of the application. No one registered to make a presentation to speak in support of the application other than the applicant or the applicant's agent. Caroline Baker, agent, has registered to speak on behalf of application D14Z10-2021-PE, and applicant Walter Lance has registered to speak to answer questions with regards to this application. Caroline, do you have uh, comments? Good evening. No, good evening again. Thank you uh, for the second chance uh, to speak. Uh, as mentioned, uh, in my view, this is a relatively straightforward application in that the aggregate has been fully extracted. The appropriate steps have been taken with the ministry uh, to close their license, uh, and they're simply looking uh, to ensure that the lands continue to be designated and zoned for agricultural uses uh, over the long term. So certainly uh, we are in agreement with staff's recommendations and can uh, be here to answer any questions. Okay, are there any questions from members of council? Seeing no questions, Council will consider a resolution regarding a planning report recommendation following the conclusion of the virtual public meeting. Bylaw number 210-2021 to implement the approval of the zoning application will be considered at a later date. The virtual public meeting is now concluded and will continue with a regular meeting of Council. The first motion that we have from our first public meeting is the Council of the Township of Perth East received a report dated December 21, 2021, prepared by the planner entitled Zoning Bylaw Amendment Number D14Z11-2020-PE -E, pertaining to the lands at Part Lot 10, concession to Ellis Ward, Township of Perth East, 4365, Line 36 for information, and that Council held a public meeting pertaining to the Zoning Bylaw Amendment in order to receive comments from the public and that council directs staff to prepare a final recommendation report for the zoning bylaw amendment for council's consideration. Moved by Carol, second by Jeremy. All in favor? Carried. And the second motion that we have is that the council of the township of Perth East Receive the report dated December 21, 2021, prepared by the planner entitled Zoning Bylaw Amendment D14-Z10-2021-PE, pertaining to the lands at Lot 19, Concession 7, Northeast Hope Ward, Township of Perth East, 2158, Perth Line 43, for information, and that Council held a public meeting pertaining to the Zoning Bylaw Amendment in order to receive comments from the public and that council directs staff to prepare a final recommendation report for the zoning bylaw amendment for council's consideration. Moved by Jerry, second by Andrew. All in favor? Carried. Okay, now we have no public hearings. We have uh, planning reports and the first planning report is the official plan amendment for Michael Wilhelm excavating. Melissa, the floor is yours. You're muted, Melissa. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. So, <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone, again. Um, so, this is the official plan amendment application pertaining to the lands at 4365 line 36 in Perth East. Hmm. Um, so this official plan amendment uh, proposes to redesignate a small portion of the aggregate land um, 
uh, where a future residence uh, will be from the mineral aggregate resource slash license pit to agricultural designation. This official plan amendment has been brought forth in conjunction with a zoning bylaw amendment, uh, which was um, discussed previously and which seeks to similarly rezone the site from the mineral resource uh, operation to agricultural zone. Uh, this proposed resignation uh, uh, will not have a negative impact on the avail availability of the aggregate or its extraction. Uh, the area to be redesignated is already occupied by a barn and the owner wishes to construct the residence and continue the aggregate operation at the same time. Uh, the official plan permits agricultural uses except a dwelling. And as a result, the applicant was proposing the amendments to allow for the erection of the residence. Um, a holding provision will be recommended um, um, to sort of protect that buffer um, during construction. Archaeological buffer. Mayor, I guess I'm hearing a lot of background when Planner Gassic speaks. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Am I the only one hearing it? No, I'm hearing it too. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Okay, I will, I will be brief. Um, so the proposed official plan amendment is consistent with the provincial policy statement as the proposal aims to preserve the existing aggregate operation with minimal impact. The proposed official plan uh, amendment is consistent with the general intent and purpose um, of the uh, of the county official plan and as the farming operation is compatible uh, with the aggregate operation, um, and there used to be a residence um, on site. Um, sorry, I I opened I opened the wrong. This is for Lance. Never mind. Sorry, I'll go back. I'll backtrack. <laughs> so um, so tonight um, for this OPA two hundred one, um, I'm seeking council endorsement. Um, like I said, following this meeting, there will be a statutory um, public meeting at the county level where the accompanying report and recommendation to adopt the, to adopt the OPA will be made. Um, thank you, and uh, I can answer any questions uh, uh, that you might have. Okay, thanks, Melissa. Is there any questions from members of council? Can you, oh, there we go. Any questions? No, seeing no questions, we do have a motion that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive the official plan amendment planning report dated December 21, 2021, prepared by the planner entitled official plan amendment number 201 pertaining to the lands at part lot 10 concession to Ellis Ward Township of Perth East 4365 line 36 for information and that council endorse the official plan amendment 201 to the County of Perth official plan pertaining to the lands of part lot 10 concession to Ellis Ward Township of Perth East 4365 line 36. Moved by Carol, second by Amanda. Any more comments or questions? All in favor? Carried. Okay, and now we move to our second uh, official plan amendment, and that's for Walter Sherry, Rebecca Lance, and Eric Smith. So, uh, Melissa, the floor is yours. I'll try to be very brief again. Um, Um, so this is the official plan amendment uh, pertaining to the land at uh, 2151 Perth Line 43. Um, so as I informed you earlier, um, you know, the striping in, in the middle is going to be redesignated to agricultural uh, uh, designation and the northerly portion will be redesignated uh, to the natural uh, resources and um, uh, slash environment, uh, uh, so uh, natural resources environment designation. Um, this proposed OPA is consistent with the provincial policy statement as this redesignation aims to expand protections and area coverage for the natural heritage uh, feature to the north uh, and also the remaining aggregate operation, former aggregate operation will be redesignated to approximately the same acreage 
and soil capabilities and as certified by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. Uh, this official plan amendment aims to formally uh, change the um, use, uh, make the change in land use uh, pertaining to the rehabilitation of the lands. Uh, this new designation will be consistent and compatible with the adjoining agricultural use and will, uh, as discussed previously, um, save and accept that area to the north. Um, the proposed uh, official plan amendment is consistent with the general intent and purpose of the official plan. Um, again, um, this application here, I'm seeking just endorsement for this OPA 203. Uh, following this meeting, there will be a statutory public meeting at the county level um, where the accompanying report and recommendation to adopt the OPA will be made. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Melissa. Is there any questions from members of council? Seeing no questions, we have a motion that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive the official plan amendment planning report dated December 21, 2021, prepared by the planner entitled Official Plan Amendment Number 203 pertaining to the lands at Lot 19, Concession 7, Northeast Tope Ward, Township of Perth East, 2158, Perth Line 43, for information. And that council endorsed the official plan amendment 203 to the County of Perth official plan pertaining to the lands of at Lot 19, Concession 7, Northeast Hope Board, Township of Perth East, 2158, Perth Line 43. Moved by Amanda, second by Jerry. Is there any more comments or questions? All in favor? Carried. Anything else, Melissa, for you? No, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to the next planning item, and that's uh, consent to sever for Gerald and Rita Schaefer. And Adam, the floor is yours. Good evening, Your Worship, members of council. And I'm going to share screen and walk council through this application. And I trust everybody can see the air photo. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So the subject lands are located at the southwest corner of line 39 and road 122. The farm lot um, has an area of 81.2 hectares, sorry, 81.2 acres. And the farm severed lot would have an area of 1.38 acres with just a little over 200 feet of frontage. Uh, the home farm for this property is located just north, a little bit further up road 122. Uh, the farm lot's currently cash cropped, and this is the uh, McCaffrey drain. I, in my staff report, I indicated it was the court drain. That's a, that was a typo. It's uh, McCaffrey. Uh, so the severance sketch just indicates uh, the lot dimensions. So the severed lot would include the house, the driveway, the wires, as well as the uh, steel shed. And then the septic system is kind of in the back corner here, which gives the lot that little bit of a unusual shape. Uh, that's why it's not squared off perfectly. So staff have reviewed this application in accordance with the official plan. Uh, we did circulate neighbors. We didn't receive any written correspondence uh, or any type of objections. Staff are recommending approval of the application subject to the conditions in the staff report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that council may have. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Adam. Questions of the report, Daryl? Yeah, no, there. I, when I first noticed the hedge there, I was just wondering how big that was. And then you look at the direction, the hedge has probably got some height to it, from what I understand, and works as a windbreak too from the south. Uh, that... Yeah, sorry, uh, through you, your worship, to Councillor Herlick up. Uh, I actually forgot to walk you through the site photos. There's only two of them, but maybe I can just do that quickly. Sure. So the site photos, this is from the driveway looking out. Uh, so there's a bit of, there's some mature trees here, but basically the, the lot's surrounded by cornfield. And the, uh, this is looking north of 122. So again, there's a few small trees, but uh, the lot is really defined and, and encompassed by that, uh, that cash crop field. And this photo again, just uh, most of the mature tree uh, covers on the south side 
and it just photo of the uh, posting uh, in accordance with the Planning Act. Okay, any more questions? Oh, that's good. Thanks, eh? No, I just wanted to touch on that a little more. Thanks. Okay, anyone else with questions? No questions? Okay, we do have a motion that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive the report entitled Application for Consent to Sever B45-21, affecting lands described as Lot 12, Concession 15, Ellis Ward, Township of Perth East, 4352, Road 122, dated December 21, 2021. And that council recommends that the County of Perth Land Division Committee approve the application for consent to sever B45-21 for lands described as Lot 12, Concession 15, Ellis Ward, Township of Perth East, 4352, Road 122, subject to the following conditions. And there's nine conditions, and I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest versions. So number one is confirmation be received from the solicitor that the certificate of the official will be scanned and attached to the electronic register that number two, the land division committee approve uh, description that is consistent with the application. Number three, the confirmation be received by the land division committee that the notice sign and the frame posted on the subject property has been returned. Number four, the confirmation be received. The property owner has entered into an agreement with the County of Perth to prohibit any new permanent resident dwellings on the retained farm lot. Number five, that Perth East, uh, all taxes have been paid in full to Perth East. Number six, that confirmation be received from the Township of Perth East. All financial requirements are met. Number seven, that Perth East, uh, the drains have all been reviewed and updated. Number eight, confirmation be received for Perth East that the amendment to the Township's Perth East zoning, uh, excuse me, Township of Perth East implementing zoning bylaw has been adopted to zone the proposed severed lot to permit only a dwelling and accessory uses, buildings and structures. Um, and number nine, that confirmation be received from the Township that the retained farm lot has been assigned as a municipal address and the lot owners contains a municipal address signed with the cost of any of this new signage be borne by the applicants. So we need a mover and a seconder for all that. Moved by Jeremy, second by Daryl. Is there any more comments or questions? All in favor? Carried. Thanks, Adam. Do you have anything else you wanna share? Uh, no, your worship, uh, through you to members of council. Thank you and have a good evening. Thanks, Adam. Yep, have a good Christmas. <laughs> Our next report is from the CAO, and we have the Creating a Healthy Environment Greenhouse Gas Reduction Plan and Contract Extension. Teresa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mary, Mayor, I guess. Um, the report before um, Council is just an example of uh, the positive collaboration we have between the seven um, municipalities. Um, if there's an opportunity for funding, it's uh, certainly great to work together and have that collaboration and to have a plan in place would, that would be extremely beneficial. As well, um, that's been indicated previously, in addition to the climate change plan, the coordinator position um, supports Perth East and works extensively with um, our staff members to meet compliance in such things as um, the energy and the conservation demand management plan. Um, and that's different reporting that we have to do in, in order to meet provincial legislation. Um, that's all I have to add to the report, but I certainly um, am available to answer any questions that council may have. Any questions for Teresa, Daryl? Yeah, no, thanks there for clearing that up on the, the provincial mandate. A component. How often? How does often does that get refreshed um, and updated? You know what I'm trying to ask here. We found that you you showed some documents that were done back a few years ago where you compiled, and now we go forward. I know that's that's provincial mandate, right? Sorry. So in terms of that reporting, um, and I'm um, going to uh, get Wes to weigh in on this as well, because public works are, are the ones that are actually doing or responsible for the reporting. Um, so I'm going to um, have you weigh in on that, Wes? 
My understanding is it's annually. Yeah, once a year. We report once a year. Okay, anyone else with questions? No questions. Okay. The motion is that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive the climate change report prepared by the CAO dated December 21, 2021 for information and the Council of the Township of Perth East adopts the creating a healthy environment greenhouse gas reduction plan and the Township of Perth East utilize the creating a healthy environment greenhouse gas reduction plan as a framework guiding document to formulate specific goals, objectives, and implementation plans for the Township of Perth East, and that Council approve extending the contract for the Climate Change Coordinator until December 31, 2022, with costs associated being shared between the seven area municipalities, County of Perth, Municipality of West Perth, Township of Perth East, Township of Perth South, Municipality of North Perth, Town of St. Mary's, and the City of Stratford. And the Township of Perth East shared costs of approximately $14,000 be included in the 2022 Perth East budget to be funded from the corporate reserve. Gary? I'll, I'll move the recommendation. Okay. Moved by Jerry, second by Andrew. Comments or questions? Jeremy? Sorry, earlier my computer shut off. If you see me disappear, I don't know why, but um, Wes, how much value are we getting out of the, the assistance with the energy and conservation management plan completion um, that Teresa mentioned? So you're having to produce those reports to the province, I presume. Um, how much value are you getting out of that? Like, is it saving you five thousand dollars worth of staff time? Ten thousand? What's the uh, what's the actual end benefit for us on on that item? I'm not so sure that there's um, a great benefit maybe at this point in time, but I think going forward that we're going to see that um, any time that we're we're looking for any funding of any sort, we're going to have to have good reporting. And I think right now we're kind of building a building a, a case, if you, if you can uh, put it that way, in order to, to be able to show um, the province or any, any funding uh, uh, opportunities coming down the road. I think that's where it's, it's more of a building thing at this point in time. Sorry, when, when you say building thing, is that physical buildings or building sort of our, our internal infrastructure out about having this management plan in place? It would be both. So we may or may not qualify for a grant based on not having the stuff up to date as as it could be, and being as you know proactive on it as possible. Is that you know it can apply to different different departments too? But is that really the case? Like, I feel that that would be the case. That I think that's what's um, any you know any of the uh, climate change stuff that you're reading um, most of it is good reporting is, is is key to all of this. Okay. Any other questions, Andrew? Yeah, more more of a comment. I, I would have left my questions for before the, the motion was on the floor personally, but um, so I, I, I appreciate that the municipality needs to be a leader in, in greenhouse gas emissions. And, you know, we're, earlier we we're discussing putting pumps in water and, and splash pads and amenities, which all gobble up and growth itself actually uh, is, a, is a big problem. Um, you got to get a grip on that because that, that creates all, all this, this environmental concerns that we're, we're trying to uh, mitigate. So I understand, I understand it. I understand that a lot of people look at the graph the exponential graph going up of carbon emissions. I've uh, spent a lot of time looking into this because I am concerned about it too. Uh, people who know scientists, they flip that graph up upside down and it shows we're falling off a cliff on greenhouse gas emissions. If you flip that graph upside down, so I'm gonna have a really hard time um, supporting this, this motion because um, if it was just strictly the municipality uh, operations, 100%. But uh, there's components, and I've read this document multiple times, that are not in the, in the municipality's scope of jurisdiction, I feel. 
And uh, uh, if we want to bring it back in another form with just a min municipality so we can support staff in their, in their journey to make sure we get our funding, 100%. But I, I won't be supporting this for those reasons. Okay, Jeremy. I think the part of this uh, recommendation that has me mostly concerned is the second part that says that we adopt the Creating a Healthy Environment Greenhouse Grass Reduction Plan. That item in particular is suggesting that we're adopting this entire document and, and treating it as a go forward. Whereas the next statement, the third recommendation says we're gonna utilize it to create the Greenhouse Grass Reduction Plan as a guiding God document and framework. I have a bit of an issue with that second statement in there um, that we're adopting that entire plan. If we were just, you know, taking a look at it and using it as framework, I'm fine with that. But adopting this plan as a whole is uh, that's causing me a bit of an issue uh, for this recommendation. So um, I think the rest of those items I'm I'm generally okay with, but it's that second that second line in the recommendation that's causing me a bit of issue. But I'd I'd like to hear what other others think of it too. Thanks, Teresa. Would you like to do any clarification on what what Jeremy just asked? Certainly, I can do that. So the the plan itself was um, as indicated. It it is. Um, encompassing of, and we did this, or it was a collaborative effort, a joint plan um, addressing seven municipalities. So um, basically the overall plan, looking at that, and there's nothing in it indicating that Perth East are going to be um, all of these elements that, that Perth East are going to be adopting. And that's why in the resolution where it says that this plan is adopted as a frame, basically we would be using it as a framework um, and establishing those goals, initiatives, and the implementation plan. So that's why the resolution was written that way. I'm just a little fuzzy on why that second note needs to be in there, I guess, if we're going to utilize it as a, a guiding document. I'm not sure that second statement needs to be in there. To me, that means that we're taking this all as gospel and, and you know, that information is correct and we're moving forward with it. Thanks. There's some information, Jeremy, in that we don't use or we won't utilize, right? So I think that's the point Teresa was was trying to make. No, and, and you know, I don't want, I'm not going to debate it, I, and I get that, but it is saying that we're going to take that document and adopt it. And to me, that's that's pretty strong words to say that we're basically saying, yes, this is information is entirely correct, and we would like the township to move forward with it. And then we're kind of contradicting that with the third statement. Okay, any other one people with questions, Daryl? No, a lot of my concerns have been brought to the table here. I think thanks for clearing that up. It is a little complicated. I still, I, I've raised the concerns of overlapping policy and living documents. Um, and that's my concerns is living documents and there's powerful, powerful um, within this document that I'm not sure I'm comfortable with. I've struggled with it greatly and I'll oh, thank you. Okay, anyone else with questions? Amanda? Um, I have a question and then a comment. Um, so my question is, and, and perhaps staff might not have the answer to this, but um, can we pinpoint how many grants or uh, reports we need to provide to the province in the last six months or the last year that have required this information? I can't give you that exact, I will be honest, I can't give you that exact information right now. Um, certainly we can get that information to council. Uh, and then just, uh, thank you, Teresa. Um, and so just further to that, uh, uh, I think for me, I, I have a lot of concerns with this as well. Um, I haven't seen anything uh, provincially or federally where this has been mandated. 
uh, that uh, municipalities do this. I think if that's the case, I think this, you know, that really changes the debate of the merits of this motion. Um, I have some uh, concerns with the, the report, uh, a number of them, uh, most of it being that some of the items listed in, in my view uh, fall outside the scope of um, municipal jurisdiction. There is references to retrofitting programs, which in my view falls under the purview of the uh, provincial or federal government. Um, there is also um, uh, uh, other items as well that uh, is um, questionable regarding increasing naturalization we already uh, live in a very rural uh, municipality. Um, there was also referencing to um, helping the farming community. Um, and I know that there is some great programs already offered. Um, the, the CAP program, uh, which is 100% federal dollars uh, administered by the province, allows farmers to do cost sharing programs. Um, and some of those things are related to um, climate and soil health and things like that. So for me, um, you know, supporting this is a bit concerning at this point. I would really like to see, um, you know, some standards or some direction given from the feds or the province. Uh, and then uh, that would really allow us to hire somebody that fits that role that can really help us along. Um, so therefore, I won't be supporting this motion as it uh, as it's currently um, as it's currently uh, written. Okay. Anyone else with questions? I believe Teresa made a comment at the beginning about the province. Teresa, can you say that again? What you said beginning of your report? Um, just in, in terms of the extensive work that we have with um, working the um, coordinator, working in coordination with our staff um, to complete, to be in compliance with, with some of our reporting requirements um, that are in accordance with, with provincial legislation. So that was the one where I, I referred to um, the energy, for example, the energy and, and conservation demand management. Okay, anyone else? Jerry? Just as the mover, um, and just to answer or to comment on a couple of comments for Councillor Brodig, we already have someone hired. This person was hired to do the report and we're gonna make, let's say we're gonna extend it for, for another year. Yes, this isn't mandated, but at least we would be ready. We, the asset management that we worked so diligent on was not mandated, but then it was. We were prepared. We, we were ready. Um, so, yeah, this, this is a well done report. And um, Mary, gets, as the mover, may I request a recorded vote, please? Okay. Anyone else with questions? Amanda? Just a point of clarification uh, regarding my comments earlier. Um, I, as I understand it, the motion is to extend the current contract. Um, this, uh, to my understanding, this, this, the intent of this original contract. So this would be to extend it for a second time. Um, we've already, uh, council extended this contract already once. Um, and it was a grant opportunity for what I understood to be a one-time opportunity. So I just want to make reference that this would be a second extension uh, for this uh, particular position. Gary? Perhaps I'd like to make a, an amendment to the motion, if I may. Okay. That the first three statements be included and perhaps that the, um, well, I'd like to approve the extending of the, the contract, but let's refer this to, to next year's budget, budget talks that we approve the plan, but the approval of the extension be referred to, to budget. Is there some way that we could do that? 
Sure, okay, so you're going to amend. So Jerry's moving that. Do we have a seconder for the uh, amendment? Jeremy? Okay, so the amendment is that we're the uh, last bullet that talks about the contract will be um, sent to the budget committee. Okay. So, Andrew? Just a quick question. Why are we extending a contract when the reports and the final reports in front of us? Just so I can get a clear idea of how I should vote on this. So at the county, we that's how they did it. the county. We received a report on the uh, on this item, and then we we sent it to our budget instead of doing it in in council. And that's just how county council chose to do it. So you you could do it either way. You could do it right now, or you could send it. But right now we have a motion on the floor to have that part go to the budget committee. Andrew. Yeah, so to clarify, my question is, is we're voting on moving this item to budget when when the function of the the, uh, the staff member was to generate a report, which we see a final version in front of us. So I'm failed to see the purpose of why we're, we're moving it ahead at all. So that's why, what I'm trying to, to resolve here so I can vote accordingly. Trisha, you want to help me out here? Sure. <laughs> As council will recall, um, we actually had um, a break in, in terms of with the transition with two different coordinators. So, so there was a period of time when we didn't have a coordinator. So to pull the, the report together, there was a lot of work. Um, the report is in front of council now and was presented to council previously um, at another council meeting. But However, there is still work that that coordinator is, is working with our staff and there's the implementation. So, so just as part of the recommendation with the Perth East, the goals, um, the, the, the goals, the implementation, all that type of thing, those things need to be developed. And, and as part of this report, it also indicates, you know, one of the things about forming an agricultural committee. So that way we can get um, and, and that coordinator is working with the seven municipalities. So in each municipality being unique, have to come up with those plans, um, the, the committee members and, and formulate what exactly our goals, our implementation is going, our goals, our initiatives and our implementation is going to be. So um, it's, uh, the plan is there, but we just can't take it and um, put it on the shelf and say, well, we're done. And there's a, there's a, a lot of things that don't apply to Perth East. The, the things that apply to Perth East and, and all the other municipalities, that it, those are the things that have to be developed in, in terms of coming forward. So, so there is a lot of work and we are um, relying on that coordinator to help us through this whole thing to, to, uh, for specifically for Perth East and the other municipalities involved. Thank you. Okay, anyone else with questions, Daryl? No, just one last thing there. I've made the comment before, but I'll make it again. Our conservation authorities, our soil and crop and health, the grain farmers, the OFA, they all continuously work and engage with farmers at a great level. Um, I've never seen anything yet mandated that we have to have this um, at this level. It's a, it's it's heavy handed again. I, I don't like what's in it. And man, we do so much at so many levels and just another committee, another meeting. I've made mm -hmm. this comment before as well. You run out of spending other people's money and it's just a living document and I'll make that clear. And and I and I'm I have my concerns. Thank you. Jeremy? So I want to be clear on the motion too. It's the first three statements and that we refer to budget for the approval of the $14,000. Is that right? Correct. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to vote on the amendment. And the amendment is that council approve extending the contract 
with the Climate Change Coordinator until December 31st, 2020, with costs associated being shared between the seven area municipalities, and that's the County of Perth, West Perth, Perth East, Perth South, North Perth, St. Mary's, and Stratford, and the Township of Perth East shared costs of approximately 14,000 be included in the 2022 Perth East budget to be funded from the corporate reserve. So the amendment is to send that portion of the motion to the budget. Correct, am I on the right track here, Eric? <laughs> okay, and Jerry has asked for a recorded vote. So I will let Eric take over and do the recorded vote for the amendment. Thank you. Um, Councillor Broadhagen. So, sorry to interrupt. So the recorded vote is on the amendment for, or on the original, on the motion? Well, sorry, Jerry, would you want it for both or just for the... Um, Let's do both. What? Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Thank That's you. my my fault. I assumed. I'm sorry. Okay, Eric. Okay. Um, so for the amendment, um, Councillor Broadhagen. Nay. Nay. Councillor McAlpine. Nay. Councillor Herlick. Nay. Councillor Matheson. Yay. Councillor Smith. Yay. Deputy Mayor McDermott. Nay. And Mayor Agnes. Yes. So that is defeated. Okay. So being that we do not have an amendment or the amendment didn't go through, Eric, maybe you need to we vote on the original motion. Does the paragraph stay in or stay out? Um, it would stay in as the original motion, I believe. Okay, so then we're going back to the original motion. Do you want me to read it all again? That'd be helpful. Okay. Just for clarification. Okay, so for clarification, the Council of Township of Perth East received the climate change report prepared by the CAO dated December 21, 21, 21. Sorry for information. Township of Perth East Council adopted creating a healthy environment greenhouse gas reduction plan. And that Township of Perth East utilize a creating a healthy environment greenhouse gas reduction plan as a framework guiding document to formulate specific goals, objectives, and implementation plans for the Township of Perth East. Approve extending the contract for the climate change coordinator until December 31st, 2022, with costs associated being shared between the seven area municipalities, the County of Perth, Municipality of West Perth, Township of Perth East, Township of Perth South, Municipality of North Perth, Town of St. Mary's, and City of Stratford. And the Township of Perth East shared costs of approximately 14,000 be included in the 2022 Perth East budget to be funded from the corporate reserve. Okay. Questions or comments? Seeing none. Oh, Jerry. Just to confirm, I I was the mover and yes. was Councilor McCoy the seconder of this motion? Yes. yes. And requested a recorded vote as well. Thank you. Okay. Daryl? No, that, that that's 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 good. I just want to clear up one last time. Um, it's recorded, so it's beautiful. The, the, the day of Zoom has really helped. I just want to make clear that the residents of Perth East are very progressive already. They work continuously with local agriculture groups. We are stewards. We are the salt. We are the green of the earth, and we care. And we are already going to be getting mandates, I feel, directly from the federal government. We don't know yet, but there's a lot of cooking. And the idea that we need to try and come at it at this angle without a mandate, I have my concerns. So that needs to be public. And we work hard, continuously, daily, as well as this municipality to make smart, wise decisions. And, you know, living documents and pushy in implementation of bylaw or enforcement, I, I, it's, it's too much. And it's not mandated. It's, thank you. So I have a couple questions before we move on. If we do not join this group and this is mandated, 
what is Perth East going to do? And how are we going to come up with the information? And how are we going to hire someone on top of to do this? So that's all the questions I have. So Eric, if you'd please uh, do the call. Yeah, so we have the recorded vote on the original motion. Um, Councillor Broadhagen? Nay. Councillor McAlpine? Nay. Councillor Herlick? Nay. Councillor Smith? Yay. Councillor Matheson? Nay. Deputy Mayor McDermott? Nay. Mayor Eggett? Uh, yes. So that motion is defeated. Okay. Jeremy? I'd like to move a motion that uh, we receive for information um, that we use this document. So point one, point three on the recommendation and that we refer to budget for the $14,000 to continue on. Okay, procedurally wise, help me here, Teresa and, and Eric. So Jeremy wants to do the first three. I don't, want, I don't want the first three. I want number one, number three, and oh, that sorry. budget for the $14,000. As I noticed, I have a bit of an issue with receiving with with adopting this plan. I don't agree with everything that's in it, but I think we uh, we need to receive for information. We also need to use this to formulate our plan, but not adopt it. And we need to at least review this fourteen thousand dollars to possibly continue on, like you had indicated. Okay, so Jeremy's moving that. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Jerry? A uh, point of order. Um, we're, we're voting on the same thing twice, the, the, the amendment and then portions of the original um, saying it, it's very cumbersome. Really, this has been defeated. We, we can, but uh, just, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, let's have clarification from Eric. Are we voting on the same thing when we take one thing out? Um, this is a, a bit of a tough one. Um, so we, the original motion was defeated. So council does have to pass a motion to do with this report. Yeah. If I may. Yeah. Would it, would, uh, if, uh, since councilor Matheson, um, was on the prevailing side, I guess a loss is a prevailing side. You could bring it back to no uh, motion of reconsideration to be more correct. Um, yes. yes. I'm viewing this as an entirely separate motion. There's there's elements of the previous motion that are in here, and there's also elements of the uh, the amendment to the motion. But there's it's an entirely separate motion, and I voted the way that I did in the amendment and the original motion as it's consistent with this motion. So I think this is, I think this is adequate for a new motion personally. It's. Yeah, I think it can be a new motion. We do have to do something with it. He is, Councilor Matheson is changing it. So I think it's okay to be a new motion. thinking we're good to go, Eric? Yes, sorry. Okay. No, that's just for clarification. I've never seen this happen before, so I want to make sure we're going uh, correctly procedurally wise. Okay, any other questions or comments on this? Carol? Just quick, I, I just still want to clear up. There is no mandate behind this. And 
we do already meet the base requirement of provincial legislation. And, you know, I just want to make that clear. So it's on, on, on the clip here. Thank you. Hey, Jeremy. I, I do agree with that too, Daryl. And I know there's no mandate, but like Councillor Smith said, I think you know, we were actually really proactive on, on getting our asset management plan in place. Um, there was a significant amount of municipalities that did not have that, and we were pretty well done ours or very close to it, and some hadn't even started. So I do think there's a lot of merit in, in continuing on possibly with this and referring it to budget and having that discussion there. Okay, anyone else? Daryl? No, just again, just to come back again and again, like a recreation plan or what we're talking there with Jeremy and, and Jerry are talking of, that was the township and our property and our assets. We are now enroaching in new grounds. And it's very concerning to me. I, it's just it's a little heavy and yeah, just by law enforcement that they're mentioning there. And it's living, it's too much living and Andrew, did you have your hand up? Yes, thank you, Rhonda. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, that I'm sure to, to kind of dis, dispel a little bit of, you know, what we're thinking that we're going to be behind the ball. It might be, but when the province or the feds or both roll out their plan, um, they will have a concise plan that we can follow. Um, may or may not be like what this is. Um, hopefully won't have all the components that are out of our jurisdiction in it. And um, I believe in asset management, there was funding to get us by that. And, and yes, with, with our great staff, we, we came up with flying colors for sure, but we haven't even got the parameters of what a possible plan we're, we're kind of going ahead in something that, uh, that uh, isn't, isn't actually happened yet. So that that's, that's my biggest concern is the jurisdiction and, I'm sure there'll be funding for this to roll this out if it becomes a requirement as other programs have in the past. Okay, anyone else with questions, comments? So the motion is that the Council Township of Perth East receive the climate change report prepared by the CAO dated December 21, 2021 for information that the Township of Perth East utilized in creating a healthy environment greenhouse gas reduction plan as a framework guiding document to formulate specific goals, objectives, and implementation plans for the Township of Perth East, and that Council approve extending the contract for the climate con change coordinator until December 31st with costs associated shared between the seven municipalities and this item be referred to the budget. Jeremy? Or I'm not asking to, it to be approved. I'm asking to refer it to budget. Yes, that was my mistake, what I read. Okay. Sorry. So it's the, uh, the uh, costs of this associated with this be referred to budget. I, I think, yes, I think there's some merit in the third point, the second point you just brought up, because there could actually be some cost savings to us as well in the long term by, by following through and completing this plan and using this as a... Uh, a framework or guiding document. So there could be some additional cost savings to us as well as this moves forward. So more than the $14,000 perhaps. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else before I call the question? All in favor? One, two, three. Defeated. Okay, you ready to move on? We'll move to the clerk. Uh, we first item we have is Luckhurst Course and Holman Court. Uh, Matt, Madam Mayor, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Councillor Broadhagen has her. Sorry, sorry I, I wanted to make a motion to receive the report for information. Okay, moved by Amanda. Do we have a seconder? 
Rivera. All in favor? Oh, Jerry, sorry, Jerry. Yeah, thank you. It's a lot of work has been done here for us to receive this report for information and put it on a shelf. I'm totally, I'm very disappointed, but again, a lot of work here. Okay, all in favor of just receiving it for information? Carried. Okay, we move on to the clerk and the first item under the clerk is the Luckhurst Court and Holman Court. Uh, Eric, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so yeah, this report is just a little bit of housekeeping for um, some planning matters that were identified by Adam Betteridge when he was the planner at Perth East. Um, first, the Luckhurst Court, when during the development, um, it was noted that it was never formally dedicated as a public highway. So to rectify this situation, we just need to pass a quick bylaw to dedicate that as a public highway, which will then be registered on title. For Holman Court, it was noted that there was no one foot reserves. Um, so one, we'll just need to close a portion of, of Holman Court to, to account for the one foot reserves and that will be registered on title as well. And I'm here for any questions if anyone has anything. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Eric. Any questions for Eric? So we have a motion that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive a report prepared by the Acting Municipal Clerk dated December 21, 2021, entitled Luckhurst Court and Holman Court for information that Council proceed with the adoption of bylaw number 70-2021 being a bylaw to establish lands as a public highway and that Council proceed with the adoption of bylaw number 71-2021 being a bylaw to close a portion of a public highway. Moved by Andrew, second by Gary. Comments or questions? All in favor? Gary. And the next one we have is tender opening for the Myers Municipal Drain. Eric. Thank you, Mary Agus. Um, yeah, so we had just a point of or just let council know we did have the um, quarter revision this evening just before the council meeting um, we received no appeals so the assessment schedule what was upheld um, so we opened the tenders for the Myers municipal drain we received three three bids with Robinson farm drainage coming in at the lowest for two hundred ninety thousand two hundred forty five dollars and um, between myself and Bill Dietrich that's who we are recommending for approval Okay, thank you, Eric. Any questions for Eric on this, Daryl? Oh, again, no, uh, well done. It's nice to see we, we're getting these people applying to these tenders. And uh, we can maybe say yay, nay. I know a bunch of barns that have been put on hold. These may be a sign of the times. And, you know, it's nice to see that we got contractors continuously engaging in this. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. But it's good. What a swing. What a swing in pricing. It's nice. And uh, no, good work. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? No questions. The Council of the Township of Perth East award the tender for construction of the Myers Municipal Drain 2021 to Robinson Farm Drainage with their submission of $290,245, excluding taxes only upon satisfactory resolution to all appeals before the court a revision. We have a mover and a seconder, moved by Carol, second by Amanda. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and the third item is the license agreement with the Avon River Stream Gauge, Eric. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, this is just a renewal request for a licensing agreement that has um, been in place for quite some time. So this is on the Avon River. Uh, it's for Environment and Climate Change Canada as well, Upper Thames Conservation Authority. They use it for monitoring um, some data within the river. So the, the existing gauge is already there. There is no installing. Um, so it's just to allow 
both Environment and Climate Change Canada as well as UTRCA to continue using our lands where that gauge is. And it is going through, it will expire October 31st, 2031. Okay, any questions for Eric on this, Daryl? Oh, no, that's interesting. No, I knew that was there. And yeah, it's good. Yeah, it, it's, it's mandated and it's good. Again, these are examples, Council, of ex existing work that is done that we can build off of. And, and it, it's law by the province. So no, it, it's good stuff. And we work with our conservation authorities and, and do what we can. Sometimes we like and butt heads a little bit, but we work through things. And that's the best part. Uh, we still have a voice. Thank you. Andrew? Sorry, I, I'd just like to hold things up here just for a quick question for education in case anybody's watching, including myself. Um, so is this, is, is a river, is that is that township property or is that half and half a landowner? I'm, I'm just interested to see that it's actually a township asset. Yeah, so the gauge is not actually on the river. It's just kind of right off the roadside, kind of within the road allowance. That's why it has to do with township property. Um, so the gauge is kind of up from the river, just there's a picture in the agreement. If you, if you go all the way through it, it kind of shows the existing gauge that is there. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion that the council of the township of Perth East receive a report prepared by the acting municipal clerk dated December 21, 2021 entitled license agreement Avon river stream gauge for information and that bylaw number 72-2021 be given the first, second, and third readings and the mayor and the acting municipal clerk be authorized to sign the license agreement pertaining to a water monitoring station located on the Avon River. Moved by Amanda, second by Andrew. All in favor? Carried. Okay, anything else, Eric? No, that's everything. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Eric. Now we're going to move to finance. And the first thing is the general insurance renewal. Rhonda? Good evening, everyone. We've received the 2022 general insurance quote from AON. And there is a premium increase from last year of 15.67%. And this is due to the volatility in the municipal insurance market as noted in the report. Uh, the changes to the coverage are listed on page 425, and that's in a table for you. And we have Jeff Musser here from AON Insurance. He's present, and he will answer any insurance questions that council may have. And that's all I have for this report. Okay, is there any questions from council? No. Oh, Jeremy? Uh, what is our existing limit for cyber? We're not going to discuss that in open council. If you wish to, we will go into closed session to do that. Uh, we have the, there's no changes. So is it the same as last year that I can recover the document that we received last year? Yeah, yes it is. Perhaps yeah. two years ago, we would have received the full proposal. So I have to look back at the proposal from two years ago to find that out or? Uh, it, the cyber was late coming in, so it may not have made the the, uh, the original proposal. I think, is that correct, Rhonda? I believe. I believe the reason that we didn't want to discuss the actual coverage was the event that, that may cause a security risk, Jeremy, and that may be new thinking compared to two years ago. <laughs> okay. Yep, thanks. Any other questions? We have a motion that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive the report prepared by the Treasurer dated December 21, 2021, entitled 2021 General Insurance Renewal for Information, and that Council accept the proposal from AON Risk Solutions for the 2022 Insurance and Risk Management Program for the total premium of $288,792 plus taxes. Moved by... Amanda, second by Daryl. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and we have property tax adjustments. Linda? 
Okay, our property tax adjustment report outlines the adjustments up to December 2021. And the municipal write-off total is 194,636. And that brings us $83,568 over our budget. I've noted in the report that we increased our budget significantly last year to try to prepare for the potential write-offs that are coming our way. It's a tough one to budget. A lot of the adjustments again are from the residents reverting back to the farm tax class and getting the 75% um, return. Uh, we actually discussed a, this issue at our treasurer's county meeting last week. We're not the only ones that are having problems with this. And uh, the group is going to do some um, research and try to lobby a bit with AgriCorp, maybe to review the process to see if there can be some improvements made. We tried at our end, we're sending out letters. There's not really a whole lot more we can do. The problem is if you if there's a title change on the property, it's going to revert back to residential in the timing of the review. By the time the roll gets back, it's not in the right class and that's not good. But anyway, we are looking into it and I just want to counsel to have a heads up that we're in this, the same boat we were last year and we'll hopefully make some improvements next year. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, thanks Rhonda. Any questions for Rhonda on this? No questions. We have a motion that the Council of the Township of Northeast receive the report prepared by the Treasurer dated December 21, 2021, entitled Property Tax Adjustments for Information, and that Council approve the tax adjustments listed in this report totaling $390,606.09 to be written off in accordance with section 39.1 and 40 of the Assessment Act sections 357 and 358 of the Municipal Act SO 2001-C25 as amended. Moved by Jeremy, second by Amanda. All in favor? Carried. Anything else, Rhonda? Nothing, thank you. Okay, then we'll move to public works and the tender results for the triaxo cab and chassis. Wes, the floor is yours. So this was a, a joint tender that we uh, had with the county and, and West Perth. Um, and on tender opening day, there was no bids. Uh, looking to council to single source this. Um, hoping to be able to work with the county as well and with West Perth. Um, that being said, uh, it will probably be basically our um, specifications and we would work um, probably together on pricing maybe to see if we can get a better deal, but the good chances are that we'll be on our own on this uh, tender. Um, we've been also told that in the past we've had municipal discounts. Those days are past. Um, so we're probably going to see a, a significant increase in the cost of the truck as well. So just making council aware of that. Nothing further to add. Okay, any questions of Wes? Daryl? No, it's it's very interesting times for sure. I know a couple companies right now looking to purchase trucks and it's banging your head off the, off the table in maybe a year or two. Is there any sitting anywhere, Wes? You, have you done any groundwork yet? I know you're after a triaxle. I don't want to say tandem. I, I just, it's something we've got to consider, I guess, and I, I don't want to trump you. And I know we do, and we've got travel pistols. Triaxles are handy. It allows, it's just good business. Um, it's interesting times for sure. I'm suspecting, you know, you might take 50% and pack it on where we thought to. These prices do not stop. They're changing by the week. And whether it's real or not, this is what is happening. And I'm just concerned, you know, like, can we sneak along? Can we get by? I know our assets may change them out before we scrap. Um, have you looked at different ideas, tandems, and with triaxle? Just your thoughts. Thanks. I, I've reached, we've reached out to a couple suppliers, and uh, of course, they went, you know, as soon as we start talking, they go, well, we need to, we need to reach out to our, some of our colleagues as well. So yeah, it's kind of, I think everybody's scrambling to see if there's something available. So 
Um, I know the county has uh, has did more work on this because it was originally their tender. So um, I just spoke with uh, Bill Wilson and he said they were reaching out to some of their suppliers as well. So um, we'll see where it goes. Okay, Andrew. Just because I haven't seen this before, I'd like, like to ask a question about how the uh, sole source and the budget works. So we'll be looking for a unit within that budget stated in the report, or is there, how does that work? Yeah, that's probably where it'll start out. I will probably bring something back to council unless um, council wishes to change that. And just, I know at the county, they just said, go buy a truck. Um, it's, you know, the prices you're probably going to see an increase. Um, as we all know that snowplow trucks are kind of important, a piece of equipment to have going down the road, but um, it would be whatever council wishes, I guess. Okay, any other questions? So we have a motion that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive a report entitled Tender Results 2021-033 dash 11 supply of triaxle cabin chassis dated December 21, 2021, prepared by the public, excuse me, prepared by the manager of public works and parks for information. And that council authorized the manager of public works and parks to procure this asset through single source and or direct negotiation in accordance with bylaw 60-2016 being the Perth East procurement policy. Are you moving, Jeremy? Moved by Jeremy, second by Andrew. All in favor? Carried. Okay, anything else, Wes? No, thank you. Okay, we have nothing from Billion. And then we move to Rec. We have the Aquatic Facility Review. Becky, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh... First of all, I apologize for being in and out and up and down. My puppy is acting like a puppy tonight and it's driving me crazy. So hopefully she doesn't bark while I'm speaking. Um, so with regards to the report, um, there are a number of recommendations there. I will be bringing forth a um, report to budget committee um, with regards to the recommended um, action for repair of the filtration um, room floor, which uh, is a uh, necessary uh, to address. Um, also, the, um, the recommendation with regards to the minor uh, repair and pa painting of the pool shell, that's something that uh, we include in, in, um, in our operations every three to four years anyways. So, Mabel. so um, that will also be brought forward. Um, we, have, we do have a new situation um, with a leak um, that has occurred. Um, uh, we're still trying to determine the, the source of that leak and uh, that will be something added um, probably as well um, with the budget report. So if there's any further questions. Okay, any questions for Becky? Andrew? Yeah, just a quick question about uh, how to finance the, the necessary repairs. So is there money in the system already for this so that we're putting away through asset management or reserves that won't affect taxes? How will this be a project like this be funded? Well, depending on what uh, is being recommended, because um, I don't know the exact price tag yet. So um, we do have some budget reserves. Um, but like I said, I don't know the, the total amount yet. So I, I can't say where, where that money will be. Um, suggested to be brought from. Andrew? I know we saw in the uh, consent agenda from uh, MPP Petapiece, the OCIF funding is going another round. Is, is that, would that be possibility for something like this or would we qualify? Just guessing, really. <laughs> Rhonda, do you want to help us there? Oh, was, it, was that a question? Sorry, Andrew. The OC, I believe the OCIF funding in the past, well, in the past, it's only been for infrastructure, roads, bridges, water, and sewer. There are some changes on the way they're doing the calculation, 
But uh, until I review the new criteria, I'm going to say if it's the same as last year, it would not be eligible, but I will let you know for sure. Thank you. Daryl? No, I mean, and I, I've had these thoughts rolling and rolling through my head here. There was a lot to digest, and it's it's well done. This report, that being said, you know, we can look at here, or we can look up here, um, and where we take this, and how much we say day or nay. Of course, there's there's what's necessary, and like a, I'm suspecting there's money we can through asset management through the perk in general. I believe the rules tied into that. I don't have them in front of me. These are things we gotta. We always gotta have in mind, and I know council is aware of that the asset management these days, what they're demanding of us, and what we all sat down and agreed upon and adjusted and tweaked. Again, um, this stuff, it, man, we, we don't know what it's going to cost. It's moving fast, and wages are not keeping up. I don't care what anybody says. Um, the banks ain't lying. People are remortgaging like never before because they have to. So we, we got to fix it up. We got to do what we got to do. But we, we got to keep the rate, the rate here in mind. Um, we are the sitting heads here of, of this municipality and this corporation. And we got to keep in mind who we're working for. I think the purpose of the me or the report tonight is just to give us information that this is coming. And it will come in the budget. We're not here tonight to debate where it's going to come from or, or how we're going to find it or anything else like that is my understanding. We're just we're receiving it for information and more will come back as, as time moves on through the budget system. Okay, any other questions? If not, we have a motion that the Council of the Township of Perth East receive the Aquatic Facility Review Report prepared by Recreation and Community Services Manager dated December 2020. 2021 for information, like a tongue twister. Moved by Jeremy, second by Jerry. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and we have no reports from fire. Then we have no correspondence. Do we have any council or committee reports? Nope, okay. Then we'll move on to bylaws. We have uh, three bylaws that have the first and second reading. We have bylaw number 70, 2021, to establish land as a public highway. We have bylaw 71, 2021, a bylaw to close a portion of a public highway. And we have uh, bylaw 72 2021, to authorize the signing of a license agreement with the Ministry of Environment for the operation of a hydrometric monitoring station on the Avon River. So we need a mover and a seconder for these three bylaws to be read a first and second time. Moved by Carol, second by, second by Andrew. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and then we have four bylaws to be read a third and a final reading and their bylaw 70 2021 being a bylaw to establish land as a public highway. Uh, the second one is bylaw 71 2021, a bylaw to close a portion of the public highway. The third one is 72 2021 to authorize the license agreement with the Ministry of Environment for the operation of the hydrometric monitoring station on the Avon River. And the fourth one is a provisional bylaw 115-2021, a bylaw to provide for the drainage works known as the Myers, Myers Municipal Drain 2021. So we need a mover and a seconder to be, have these read a third and a final time. Moved by Jeremy, second by Jerry. All in favor? We do not have a need for a closed session. Uh, do we have any notice of motions? No, okay, under new business, we have a motion. Uh, we had a delegation tonight. So the council of the township of Perth East received the presentation by, I'm not gonna read their last names this time, by Steve, principal planning, Monteith Brown and planning consultants and Ron, Joslyn, Steve, 
of Landscape Architects and Ron of the Landscape Architects, Township of Perthes Park Renew and Redevelopment Strategy for Information. We need a mover and a seconder, moved by Jeremy, second by Daryl. All in favor? No, Andrew's got a question. Andrew? Um, yes, thank you, Rhonda. I, I heard in the in the meeting, uh, sorry, I'm turning my head to read again here. There's, there's going to be a, a plan to um, a 10 year plan is when, when are we uh, voting on that? Budget. That'll come back into budget. And under, under the capital expenses and budget, we're looking at uh, ways to, um, we're looking at more to fix up what we already have, the assets that we have before we introduce new assets. So uh, uh, Wes and Becky and Rhonda, I believe, and Teresa are going to come up with a plan and uh, we're going to present that at the budget try to figure out how to um, address some of the items that they have brought up. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I, I, the plan's great. It's, it's really good and recreation's important. Um, I was a little, um, I was leaving it for council discussion instead of jumping in at any of the public levels. Um, you know, there's, <laughs> it's, uh, um, yeah, it, it's not what I expected. Um, you know, I didn't see mention of Quinlan. We, we have a park there. I'm not sure whether they were invited or didn't attend. Um, you know, the additional acreage in, in, in the village of Milverton with, with that huge patch of land with Greenwood. I know sports facilities would be good, but we do have competing facilities in the area uh, in Newton and the baseball parks and, and all that. And, uh, you know, a very short drive away. Um, that's a big concern that the competing facilities um, uh, idea wasn't brought forward. In, uh, in, in, in this because, you know, like I said, we've, we've closed two buildings, right? So we have to keep some of this history in mind because people people will expect, you know, there to be some, some continuous thought pattern, you know, not that this isn't all great and we did it for a reason, you know, and some other items, maybe I might have to bring in uh, a notice of motion forward to, to see if council is interested in studying some of these concerns and that came out of this report, you know, we've, uh, We've uh, justified it by saying uh, Milverton's had growth, which is great. Um, you know that gives more ass, uh, you know, more uh, assessment to pay for the, the possibly million dollars in in the taxes we we put into this into the, the amenities every year. That's great. But when we look at it from another angle of of um, assessment, uh, say if we were to take, and I know uh, Treasury has access to impact, I'm sure. You know, if you did a two bedroom house, I'll just pick in Milverton and say Shakespeare and a hundred acre farm in say Milverton and hundred acre farm in Mornington, I'm going to guess the assessments are going to be quite a bit different. I had it at about 40% before COVID hit. So theoretically people will be paying more for an asset, uh, you know, 10% not in their community. So some of these questions I'd like to bring forward and I'm glad we're going to look at it in budget. I'm just looking at over our refreshing myself on our, uh, our, uh, visioning session and we had one counselor consistently asked for more recreation but everybody else was no 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 new services right so i'm glad we're going to take a second sober look at all this uh, it's got some big price tags and and mayor Eggets is correct that uh you know we need to keep what we have and we've just seen from a report uh, a couple of reports there that uh, an existing facility is going to need a lot of money just to, just to get it going again so I, I appreciate the direction we're going, but there, there are some concerns in my opinion. Okay, so just to address your concerns, Andrew, there was a opportunity for the comments to come to the public sessions, whether it was council members or ratepayers, um, and the public, there was a comment, uh, a, a public commenting period. Um, so we can talk about it when we get to budget, but but we did have the consultation. We. Uh, I attended three of the sessions. We had uh, people from Milverton there one night, we had people from Shakespeare there one night, and we had people from Millbank there one night. And so that was everyone's opportunity to speak, including council, if they had concerns to bring them up. But um, like I said, we will um, bring some items forward at budget and we can talk some more about um, budget. I do hear what you're saying. Yes, we have a lot of parks. The, this group focused on the larger parks. And uh, 
we still need to look after the smaller ones too. So that will all be addressed as we go along. So, okay. Anyone else have any comments? Then all in favor of the receiving it for information? Carried. Oh, I lost my agenda. Is that possible? Sorry. Okay, so any announcements? If not, then we have a motion that the bylaw number 73-2021 be in a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Township of Perth East at its regular meeting held in December 21, 2021 be read a first, second, and third time. We need a mover and a seconder moved by Amanda, second by Andrew. All in favor? Carried. And we have a motion that the meeting of the council be adjourned at 9.30. Moved by Carol, second by Andrew. All in favor? Carried. So I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yes. Best to everyone. Hope you stay safe, stay healthy over the